What's going on, everyone? This is Peter with the Live Showcase. I hope you can all hear me on this amazing Thursday. I think it's Thursday. And we are here with the Basic Lux 4. What this is, is an incredibly basic... Actually, you know what? It's not incredibly basic. I gotta take that back because, surprisingly, this does have a touchscreen. This does have a glow light. So it's not is not all that basic to be completely honest and some people were saying that this is supposed to replace the touch lux 5 and you're kind of right because the touch lux 5 is on its way out because of the verse i believe it's called the verse is essentially taking the throne away from the uh touch hd3 and the touch lux Five. So those are going away. I don't know if you guys know, but they got a lot of pocketbooks. Tons of pocketbooks. Without going over every one of them, just in the 6-inch space, they have the pocketbook color, which I believe you can still grab. The Touch HD 3, the Basic 4, the Basic Lux 4, the Touch, H the Touch Lux 5. I, 5, 6 inches. I mean, dude, that's a lot of six-inch devices. Holy moly. So what are we looking at today? We're looking at the basic Lux 4. Very rarely does Pocketbook ever go past four generations. Most of the devices either hit two, three, or four. Touch Lux 5. Touch Lux 5. There's so many. The Touch Lux 5 ended up getting to the fifth gen. Don't ask me how. Usually EOL, end of life, hits at around the fourth generation. This is not that basic because we have a front light. That in and of itself is kind of amazing because there are some devices that don't have front lights, that don't have touch screens, that just rely on the controls. And this one actually has those kind of modern conveniences. And to be completely honest, this is kind of not as slow as I thought it'd be. Seriously. When you do processes on Pocketbook, typically even something as inherently easy as that, going from apps and back and forth, it, it typically takes longer than other devices and this one kind of speeds through it pretty well as you can see right here there's also minimal ghosting now granted this isn't a carta screen it's i think barely what is it 1074 by 768 something like that. it's really small it's not a, it's not um uh, it's not uh, you know 4k 2k uh it's not uh, 300 ppi it's kind of just basic e-reader hence basic lux so they have the basic which doesn't have touch control and then the basic lux has that kind of suffix that has lux on it luxury luxury right luxurious so uh let's see what we can do with this we're gonna tap the centre that's french for center i mean kind of out of context i think that's like a center like a place but i don't know i don't speak french so let us see here seems pretty fast on ink pad code 7.8 was really slow yes the ink you know what funny funnily enough nicholas um the ink pad line within its class is not that fast, but the basic Lux seems to be quite capable, even though this is a six inch basic reader. So it's kind of funny how like the bigger batter devices seem to be a little bit lesser performing. This one is very nice. You can italicize, bold, regular. Everything changes live in the background. This is where it kind of gets a little bit slower. That that was, I mean, what do you expect? The moon, right? But at the same point, that was that was objectively slower than... You know, I don't even know if it does pinch and zoom on this. Let me see. And it might conform now. Hold on, let's see. It did. That's cool. I didn't know it did that, honestly. We, you know, we, we, deal, with, uh, we deal with so many devices. My head's spinning. Because uh, just about every day we get new stuff. We're getting some more stuff really soon. Uh, actually, we are getting the Moo Inc. 2C, which is... Oh, hey, Mom. Uh, which is the uh, Kaleido 3 7.8 inch. And we're getting the Moby Scribe Wave, finally. The only domestic brand of note-taking in the USA. Uh, aside from the Scribe, which... Controversial whether it's a, um, a note-taker. It has note-taking on it. But... <laughs> That's a discussion for another day. You got rotation. You got all that fun stuff. You know, this actually does come with a lot of books. If you go to library, they do pack in quite a bit. I mean, that's a lot of books in multiple languages just to kind of have there. It's nice to have that. I think that's nice to have that. I mean, 
it doesn't weigh it down too much. It uses, I don't know, maybe 90 MB. It's really not that intrusive. I, I kind of do appreciate that there was that much there. And you know, it makes the review easier because we don't have to sideload things. Basically what happens, just because you guys aren't asking questions, I'll give you a little um, uh, inside look at the process here at Goody Reader. Um, when we get a device in, we all sit around kind of like a little boardroom table, right? X amount of chairs and uh, pass the devices around and, you know, just talk about it and stuff like that. Um, uh, if you want to, you know, go to the washroom, you raise your hand, you take the hall pass, you clock in. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's completely free to kind of do as you wish. And if you want to, you know, uh, sit in on the discussion and learn the device, that's cool. So, you know, we all talk about it and we're like, oh, this, that, and the other thing here. Pass it over there. Oh, here, here you go, Kevin. And you just pass it around, right? And then uh, we look at it. And we're like, oh, this, that, and the other thing. Oh, the back's kind of th you know, this and that. Oh, the side is, you know, whatever. And then what we do is we get it ready for review. So someone takes the notes on it to make it look nice. You know, they put all the content on there. And then we got our script writers to write out the, um, the review. So the intros, the pros and cons, the outro, stuff like that. I kind of take the lead when I do the A roll of the device. So the guy's you know, we're in the studio, we got the lights, we got the guy on camera and, uh, you know, has like a little monitor and stuff like that. And then when we do our top bird's eye view, um, mostly it's just, kind of, it goes like this, right? And then I'm here and then I'm like, oh, hey, everybody. Da, 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 da. And uh, I, 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 for the most part, kind of, I, I know the background of it because I've studied it and we, you know, I take it home for the day and then we... Uh, of course, that table discussion happens where we all talk about it. And then uh, during the A-roll portion, whenever you see the, the the big meat of the video, that's just me. But the beginning and the end is mostly the script writers that, uh, um, for the most part, it's very like uh, modern. So it's mostly the guys like dictating into Google uh, Keep, Google Drive, basically. And then I can access it and be like, oh, that's the intro and then the outro. Okay, so I got a couple rolls today and then I go in the studio and I sit in front of the XLR mic and then I do the... Uh, do the uh, the voiceovers and stuff because well I can pull the info from my head a little bit quicker than hiring someone just to do voiceovers so that's kind of what happens so uh, yeah to have a long-winded explanation as to w why it's good to have preloaded content but it's nice to have it so I can just click it and it opens up so uh, that's kind of how the review process goes here and then um, we uh, contact the respective company so pocketbook for example we're like hey thanks for the sample right uh, we did the review uh, what do you guys want us to do with this? Do you want to send? Do you want us to send it back? Do you want us to uh, send it to uh, another uh, reviewer? Sometimes they ask us to do that if there's like one near us, like South Korea or Hong Kong or something. We'll do that. Um, and then if they're like, nope, just keep it. We're like, okay, cool. So what we do is every end of the month we take the amount of samples we have, high read and i reader and iFly Tech and all that stuff, and uh, we we um, what do you call? Uh, donate them to educational uh, institutions and things like that we make sure we ask around like hey who can make use of e-readers do you guys need any we got like seven this month you know what i mean so like we would earmark maybe one of them to uh do a contest right and that's why we do our contests a little bit older things like the nova three color we would do a contest and give it to you guys and then um if something comes in and the company doesn't even respond we put it on an unboxing e-paper like i'll give you a little sneak preview this thing that came in that uh we're kind of questioning whether to put it on unboxing e-paper or not and um uh and if something's unusable and undonatable for example like an i reader neo which is kind of chinese you know what i mean uh we just sell it on ebay and give you guys like a like a seventy dollar brand new device. So you, I don't know if you guys knew, know that we do a second turn process here, where everything that we can't sell, like Pomeras, uh, eye reader stuff, the uh, CZUR book scanner. If you go to our eBay page, they're like eighty percent off. I'm not even joking. We just sold a CZUR book scanner. Uh, those things are like six hundred, seven hundred dollars. I think we someone won it for like a hundred and ninety. Like, I'm not even joking. Head over to our eBay page, same name, Goody Reader, and uh, there's, like, stuff there. Because we don't really necessarily need to make any money on it. We just kind of want to justify getting a couple pennies back to make it worth our time. But, no, we're not charging the moon on eBay, man. So, head over there if you want anything. Um, oh, Nicholas Pinotti said, your videos are really good. I have a small YouTube channel for e-readers as well. Oh, really? Oh, Nicholas, share your YouTube channel. We'll uh, we'll put it on our, um, on our Facebook uh, social media for you. And we'll tell you everyone to sub up. Yeah, uh, drop your um, tag or your at or your extension 
or your name in the chat right there, and then we'll talk about it. So, back to basics. Get it? Oh, <laughs> so we're gonna press the home button here. Oh, I guess I should show you guys. Oh, I missed the home button. Good, because I'll show you guys physical page turns. This is really quick, honestly, for something that is this kind of bare bones. That's actually not that bad. Let's zoom out. The rendering is slow here. Look at that. It's like, what do I do? Oh, oh, you want to conform to snap to edges? And then you know what else is cool? If you long press, it starts jumping by tens. 40, 50, 50, 60, 370, like 72. What the hell was that? Oh, it's only got 72. Yeah, so that's really nice. I kind of like that quick page turn because a lot of manufacturers don't even do that anymore. Barnes & Noble does that. Kobo doesn't do that, I don't believe. And Amazon doesn't do that unless you're in a... Unless you're in a um, what do you call uh, a manga because they don't have a page turn system a quick page turn system because if you press and hold the side on a kindle it just thinks you're going to do that and you know take uh notes or something like that oh look at that e platina e platina does that mean that doesn't mean e reader in por portuguese does it i'm gonna youtube you right now because you guys aren't asking anything about the basics, so I'm going to YouTube around for a bit. You guys can watch me YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, kind of right now. Let's see. E Platina. Oh, look at that. He does. Nicholas Pinotti with the... Uh, he's got the lemon read. What is this guy? Okay. So we got Steve Donahue, the man. Now we got Nicholas Pinotti with the... Uh, with the e-reader channel here wow very uh very well done nice background nice kind of cork tabletop i've never even seen this e-reader i'm not even joking what are you what are you even reviewing here man lemon read we have lemon reads but i'm s62 you have something we didn't even get lemon reads kind of one of those weird companies if you guys don't know they were based off of the old boyu but when they were transitioning into me book before they went with how king in china but right after boyu suspended operations they had this middle ground of tens of thousands of e-readers they bought called lemon read that they were going to sell to a company in china but the company in china for the most part backed out of the quantity that was agreed upon so then Boy You Slash Me Book started distributing lemon reads to everybody, us and apparently Nicholas Pinotti on his channel. So it's a very strange kind of bridge device that uses the Boy You Shells and the Me Book OS and they're, they're very cross compatible and they had these weird kind of pastel colors. Oh, he got it from AliExpress. Nice. Yeah. Um, it, and it was $65. That's because they were trying to liquidate it. Uh, I remember they, I think they sold us a brick, uh, just a skid of lemon reeds. And we were like, nah, 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 nah. We'll take, I think we'll take a box. So I think we brought a box in here in Japan of these like cotton candy colored light blue yellow devices. I'm like, what the heck is this? And one of our guys, uh, Kevin and Miki, they were like, oh, this is lemon reed. And I'm like, oh, that's that boy you think. And I think we tried to sell them for a little bit and, uh, it's I, I don't believe they ever took off. Um, I think it was mostly just like a mistake order. It doesn't happen very often in the industry, but it was a mistake order that ended up just they had a bunch of stock left over. And they were reaching to all of their distributors, JD, Taobao, AliExpress, DHgate, Wish. And you can find these lemon reeds for pennies because they couldn't get rid of them. And they had to, what, they got 10,000 units. And it's like, okay, we sold... 930 of them it's like okay well you know 9,000 more to go so they just started dumping them and they tried to sell us a couple skids on like pallets and stuff and we were just like nah man we'll do a box of 10 and we'll see where it goes and it never took off i think we have some lemon reed on our channel if you guys want to learn more about lemon reed there it is i think we did the uh if you want to learn about the s65 go to uh nicholas pinotti's channel but if you want to learn about the uh, lemon reed here and see what the heck we're talking about there is the one right there that we did and uh yeah it's um it's a strange in strange industry e-paper uh we've seen a lot of players especially like pocketbook that has just been cranking out devices they have so many units under their belt they're backlogged on the viva they're creating the verse they discontinued the ink pad light 
the big 9.7 Jobby, and then they brought it back to life. They have the ink pad color 2 that just came out that didn't have Kaleido 3. It has Kaleido 2. They're just like, I don't even know, rushing to the races, just trying to get there as quick as possible by any means possible. And they're not doing a bad job at all. Yeah, no problem, Nicholas. They're not doing a bad job at all. Pocketbook, at one point, held, I believe, greater market share for e-readers than that of Barnes & Noble, which is part of the big three. Barnes & Noble has since, mm, since about 2016 onward, has kind of recorrected their brand. But there was, a, there was a bit there where it would it would have been considered that Barnes & Noble would be outside of the big top three um, manufacturers because they were slipping. But they're back in action now. They got a collab with uh, Lenovo. They got all their new devices. They're creating new ones out of, the, out of their lineup. So uh, a lot of stuff going on. Pocketbook store, not really recommended. The reason is, is that a lot of it is just kind of Project Gutenberg, public domain crap, honestly. And this isn't, you know, a hit on Pocketbook. This is everybody. This is Onyx's bookstores. This is Big Me's bookstore. This is Hisense's bookstore. This is High Reads bookstore. This is the iReader JD bookstore. It's all just, just garbage. And it's nice that they got it there for you. You can find some things on here, some, and you place it in euros. But... It, it, it for the most part I, w I would just maybe recommend downloading books buying books on uh, you, the internet your pc desktop and then transferring them over which you can totally do but if you needed a bookstore it is there and there's one more bookstore but it doesn't uh apply to us because any of the countries we operate in do not show up on this list but it's kind of like overdrive in a way it's it's access to multiple libraries so I cannot remember how to say it. It's like O N L H I N E only nay or something. O N I E O N L E I H E on Li He. On Li He, something like that. So what you would do is you would choose from many libraries across the world and search in categories, but like if you type in Los Angeles or New York or like uh, I'm trying to choose North American places, of course. You know, Chicago, Toronto, nothing will show up. You're going to have to go like Paris or Amsterdam or something like that, Czech Republic. Then they'll show up. Then you can access the library. So, unfortunately, it doesn't really work for us, but it does have its intended purpose for multiple people around the world. Because, remember, Pocketbook is an international con 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 country. <laughs> They're an international company, first and foremost. And I say first and foremost because that's their priority when they release it. They say, how is this going to apply and work for the vast majority of people across the world? Everyone from Poland to Kosovo, all the way to New Zealand and Australia and Argentina. How do we make a device that works everywhere? And they do. And it does. And you can basically just use this freely. You can go on the browser. Uh, you can download your books. You have a... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, file Explorer. Sorry, I was going to say library, which is also correct. But you have a File Explorer. You have Gallery. You have uh, simple things as well. You know what? It's, it's really cool, too, because this does technically have apps, but they're not controllable. So you can't force stop them. You can't close them. You can't uninstall them. You can't long press and say, oh, I want to get rid of chess. You just add it to the home screen. It's really all you can do. But they do have some pretty useful things, honestly. Dropbox integration is one of them. And... I would argue that sent to pocketbooks pretty good. Pocketbook clouds pretty good. That only nay thing is is pretty solid. I like Scribble, not because I want to cheat this into saying it's a note taker, but it is kind of nice to have that on your person. If I had to, if I had to, I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna write down that guy's number. You know, nine four one two three. It's like boom. Okay, I I got it. I at least jot it down. You know what I mean? As messy as it can be, and it has some function. You technically do have eight colors. You don't have pressure sensitivity because it's your fingertip. Do I have a capacitive pen on hand? I do not. Capacitive pens are basically just like pens that have a little like balloon rubber nubby thing that you just put on the screen. So you can't use Wacom or eight or active capacitive or anything like that, but you do have some function with it. So that's very nice that they have that for you. You can save it. You can do undo. You can uh, just have like a, a list of these notes and it's quite useful i would say you also have calculator a lot of this is on your phone i understand that but it's just you know if they didn't put it on there you'd have nothing so that that's that's the argument for the most part is like a lot of people say why do i need sudoku on there why do i need 
you know, uh, RSS news and gallery and photo frame. It's like, okay, well put nothing on there. You know what I mean? Go to the app section and have there be nothing. So these manufacturers want to put a little bit of character in it and they want to put certain things that just gives you a little bit of bonuses, whether you need it or not. Totally up to you. I'm not going to play chess on this anytime soon. Although I am partial to Klondike. I kind of like that. What else can this unit do? Nothing. As you see, we're stretching for time because it doesn't do anything. It's it's basic. It's as basic as it needs to be. It doesn't need to do anything outside of what it needs to do. It has one glow light. Not one, one LED, but one style of glow light. It's called front light. And you can turn it off and on. You don't have warm light or comfort gaze, I think they call it on this comfort light. They just don't have that because they don't need that. But what they do is they give you every single possible tool to open your book, take notes, save your 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 progress, give you Google search, give you dictionary, and allow you to turn pages by tapping, swiping, or the physical buttons. They've they've given you all the tools to do what you need to do. You don't need to do Gmail. You don't need to do Google Play because that's not what this is. If you want a 6-inch e-reader that has um, color in Google Play, you get the high read Gaze 1SC. You can get that one. My memory bank's up here. I got to look right there. Right there, and I can go through every e-reader. No, I can't. It's really hard to pull those out of my mind, but that's really the only 6-inch. Oh, my God. Is that the only 6-inch with Google Play? Hold on. Ah, no, you got poke. I was like, wait, the leaf and the page are seven. No, you got pokes. That's right. You got poke five, poke four light. Those have Google Play. Ah. Ah, the gaze. Oh, look at this. Oh, wait, the M6. Damn it. I was like, the gaze. No, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Got it. The I read gaze one SC is the only color six inch with apps yes iflytech c1 doesn't have apps iReader c6 doesn't have apps pocketbook color six inch doesn't have apps onyx books poke 2 color has apps but so far so long ago discontinued i'm talking ages ago three years ago now the High Read Gaze 1 SC... Damn, we should have put that in the script. I don't think we actually put that talking point in the script. That the High Read 6-inch is the only color e-reader with apps. Wow. Am I right about that? I think I am. What else do we have color? I think that's it. Ooh, this is a revelation to us. I'm going to run to the water cooler right after this. and Be like, guys, you're never going to believe this. Nicholas Pinotti says, hey... Oh, to Hey Nick. Uh, wait, what? Oh, in re response to that. Okay. I liked having some games on my Inkpad Color. I downloaded some apps on my old Kindle, Kindle Paperwhite, and I loved it. Sad that Amazon has removed this option. That's right, they did. Can you play audiobooks? Says A Name. Yes, you can, because, embarrassingly enough, this is running micro USB, which means... I'm assuming if you, there's no Bluetooth, right? Yeah. If you use the dongle, which is a very short jump. Oh, I got it in the studio, but I don't want to go digging through bins and bother everybody right now. If you use that short jump cable, the, uh, oh, kind of looks like this, except shorter, actually. One side will be micro USB and the other side will be, I think I have a 3.5 around here somewhere, don't I? Nope. The other side will be a uh, 3.5 mil headphone jack. And it'll be a uh, female. And it'll be this really small cable. And you would simply put that in there like that. And you would get some white space. And then plug in your headphone jack or speakers to that cable. And you can listen to audiobooks. I don't know if this one can do it, if it has the hardware recognition that it can do that, but let's look. That's a damn good question. Who asked that? A name asked that. Can I get 
audiobooks on this. If I can download the audiobooks, I'm pretty sure it should have the function because it is kind of a blanket operating system for the most part. Is there audiobooks right here? It doesn't say. What if I just type in audio? I was going to go to my keyboard off camera. Stupid guy. Audio. Maybe. Oh, another down point about this. It doesn't have wi uh, Wi-Fi 5G. It only has 2.4G. So if you live in a place where you look at, you know, when you when you go to your uh, your your internet screen and you uh, select 2.4 or 5, see right there, 5, and if 5 is the only thing that comes up in your apartment complex or whatever, you won't be able to connect to this. It Seriously. So you got to keep that in mind. We have... Oh, it's set. no, that was audio is the publisher. I don't know. That's a damn good question, A name. But for now, everybody, we are wrapping up because this is very basic. There's nothing. Okay, so why I've stretched for time is because I love talking to you guys. And we've agreed that it's going to be a 30 minute session, 25, whatever, splitting hairs. There's nothing really to this. There's nothing more to really say about it. You pick it up, you put books in, you read. That's it. Everything else that we're talking about between Nicholas and I saying, oh, there's there's games on and stuff like that, it's just pleasantry things. It's just chess and Sudoku and turning this into a photo frame, which basically just goes like that, and it runs through your gallery images. It's a very basic unit, but a little bit upgraded from the basic because it is a Lux variant. So that is it. We had a short day today. A name, Nicholas Pinotti, my mom, and at the top of the hour, Maria Rengifo Garcia says hello. Welcome to Premium Contest. That is it, everybody. We will be doing an up, not an update. We will be doing a review on this, a standalone review. We're almost done. I believe our guys are editing it right now. We will hit you up. It'll be on the channel. I think that's it for today. Thank you guys so much, and I am gone. See you next week. <laughs>